What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. I hope you guys are having a great day and staying safe from this illness. So you've got some money and you want to gamble. You want to put your money to a place that's risky but also highly rewarding. Well, you are in the right video. In today's video, we're going to be talking about two high risk, high reward stocks that you guys can buy right now. Let's not waste any time and let's get down to it. If you guys are a new viewer, welcome to the Nature Boy Fitness channel or the Pidgey channel. Here we talk about nutrition, fitness and calories and as well as the new uh, series that we have here, investments. So if you guys are interested in these topics and uh, if you guys want to see more of these investment videos, smash that like button as well as hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified when the video drops. As well guys, I'm not a financial advisor so please anything I say here take it with a grain of salt. These are my opinions and my opinions only and so um, obviously we have some facts here as well that I did some research but take everything with a grain of salt and do your research first before you guys dip your feet into these stocks. Let's put on my investment glasses and let's begin. All right, so the first high risk, high reward stock that we have here is the ticker symbol LSPD or Lightspeed POS. Lightspeed is a Canadian company that offers SAAS service to their clients. Now it's a software as a service and so they provide payment gateway for their customers which are retailers, restaurants, as well as golf courses. I'm pretty sure you guys have heard about Lightspeed. They've been IPO'd since last year of March and they've been very, very compared with Shopify. And I don't know why they're saying it's the next Shopify, but guys, it's, it's not the next Shopify. Shopify is completely different. Well, they're in the same category, but they're, it's a different business type than Shopify. Shopify is purely e-commerce and online, while Lightspeed focuses on POS systems. And yes, they do have online as well, e-commerce as well, but um, they're not purely on e-commerce. They focus a lot on the brick and mortar stores. Let's outweigh the risks and the things that could potentially make it a big reward. So let's see some risks. Looking at the industry overall in the retail section, we can see that the retail, I mean, it's not, it's not old news for the past decade or so. Retail has been slowly declining. We can also see what's compensating that decline is the increase of online sales, which is e-commerce. And so it's kind of worrying to me that Lightspeed is, is, is focusing on the brick and mortar stores. Another thing that's concerning to me is that this pandemic has really taken a big toll on all retailers and restaurants and anything that has to do that isn't online. I mean, the lockdowns, the shutdowns, the restrictions, social distancing, all that is going to force a lot of retailers to close their doors and just focus on online. And since we know that retail sales are declining, this COVID situation, this pandemic situation has made it a lot faster and I'm talking about you know made the process a whole lot faster so we can see that Lightspeed has a disadvantage here when it comes to the retail section now as for the restaurant businesses pre-pandemic it's been growing at a good rate year over year um, until this COVID situation happened pandemic happened lockdown everything went down don't go to restaurants you know social distance patio only and all this kind of stuff and Obviously restaurants, they don't run on high cash flow, maybe a month max. And obviously when you shut, you shut a restaurant down for two, three months, they either have to be in really good position, they must have a lot of good cash on available just in case for the situation, for these rainy days. But if they don't, which most of them don't, they close down their stores and that's sad to see. And so Lightspeed, although has a better chance in the restaurant section, right now they're in a very big disadvantage as well. Although we are slowly recovering, slowly going back to normal, but we can never really know when normal is until we have a vaccine coming out so we can get rid of this illness for good. But I can imagine that the restaurant business will not be going anywhere. I believe that people are getting more lazier and lazier. They prefer to go to restaurants. They prefer to get milk is delivered to their home. I mean, who cooks nowadays? Like seriously, who cooks? So that's my overall outlook on the market that this company is focusing on. So let's go ahead and look at their revenues and earnings, see what they are up to. So as we can see, the revenues are going at a very fast rate and it's incredible to see that their revenues are going at this rate. Now, what's not good to see is the profits, is the earnings, it's a negative. But pretty much they're not making money at all. And that's due to their high operating expense. Now let's look at the EPS or earnings per share and they're all missed, which is not a good thing to see when you want to invest to a company but they are at a growth stage they are a growth company they are focusing on just growing the business and we can see uh, what exactly they're doing with their money in the cash flow statements if we look at the cash flow statement you can see they're buying a lot of businesses and that's what they are claiming they are they are buying a lot of businesses in Europe 
and such. I think they right now they have 77,000 customers, which is just incredible. Their FCF, which is the free cash flow, is, is negative as well, which is a bad sign when you want to uh, invest in a company. Companies should have cash flow when you guys are investing in. Seeing a negative cash flow is not a good sign to see at all. So after briefly looking at these financial statements, looking at key points, we can see that they are focusing on growth. They are focusing on accusation on a lot of businesses, buying a lot of businesses and growing their uh, services that way. Now let's go see what's happening in the balance sheet to see exactly how healthy this company is. So if we look at the balance sheet, they are extremely healthy. I mean, the current assets at the moment can pay all the liabilities today if they want to. For example, their current lab assets and current liabilities, when you divide that, it gives you a healthy 3.3. Which is amazing. That means that they can pay off their current liabilities three times over, which is absolutely amazing. So if we divide the total assets with the total liabilities, we get about 3.6, which is absolutely amazing. That's like a very, very healthy company. But what's very interesting here is that if we divide the current assets with the, with the total liabilities, we get about 1.7 meaning that the company can pay off their current, their, their total liabilities with their current assets almost twice if they really want to. That outweighs the risk for me that they have a very strong and healthy balance sheet that they can pay off any debt at any moment today, all of it if they want. So doing these activities that they're doing right now by being negative and buying companies kind of gives them this competitive advantage. But looking at this type of balance sheet, it is very, very unlikely this company to go bankrupt anytime soon even with all these activities going on. So I am very much impressed in this regard. Now, what I didn't know, if we look at the chart here, it dipped all the way in March at $10.50. I did, I did not know until literally a month after that that they had e-commerce. And their e-commerce, they, they said they, they've grown about 400% in that time. So when I saw this, I bought more shares of this company. Yes, I do own quite a bit of shares of this company. The fact that they were fast enough to make an e-commerce for their retail businesses, the fact that they can't really sell in store, they have to sell online, was amazing and very innovative. Very, and, and, they, and they thought very fast, and that's what I love about that. If we look at the shareholder equity, it's been increasing over time as well. So that's very good to see as well as an investor. In my opinion, if they can continue with the e-commerce and continue to go forward, because right now, it's not a good place for retailers, it's not a good place for restaurants, and it's also not a good place for golf places, um, especially when this thing can spread very easily. So if they can heavily focus on e-commerce and get their customers switch to their e-commerce platform a lot faster, I think they're going to be in a very, very amazing position in the future. The current price is $39.29, and if you would ask me if this is overpriced or underpriced or just the right price, I really don't know right now. This is a speculative stock at the moment, knowing that the retail section is not the best place to be right now, and restaurants are effy at the moment. And so, and golf courses, I have no idea what they're doing in the golf courses or you know how they're doing um, just individually. But I know that majority of their clients and tenants or, or, or customers are in the retail and restaurant sections. Personally for me, I own this stock and this is more for a long-term outlook. I really think the award, the reward is very high here. Their, their balance sheet is just spectacular and they're holding up extremely well in this case. In my opinion, my price point in two years time is a hundred bucks. In my opinion, it's going, I think in two years time it's gonna be a hundred dollars per share. If it may not be, don't take my word for it. I'm just saying that this is this is from my calculations, what I do, what I think, and what I believe in. I think this company has a lot of room to grow. The fact that they are diversified in 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 not just in Canada, but they're in the U.S. and Europe, and they're just buying a lot of businesses, and they're in a good place to, do, to they're in a good place to do that right now. So if they can continue doing what they're doing and increase that revenue to a point that. Um, it can give profits one day. I think this company is has a very good competitive advantage. All right, so before we get to the second stock, I just want to take some time and talk about this book. This book is called The Warren Buffett and the Interpretation of uh, Financial Statements. If you guys are starting out to invest in the stock market, you guys need to know financial statements. You guys need to know about income statements, balance sheets, and cash flow statements, and all that. This is one of the first books that I read before I started investing in the stock market. And so it tells you what key points to look at when you're looking at a stock or a company and it tells you exactly um, where to look and what to divide and it gives you all these cool calculations that you wouldn't really know about when you would search online. So you guys can think of this book kind of like a guide. You guys can go back to it when you guys are stuck somewhere or you guys don't understand something. You can just go back to this book and read it. 
and uh, it's coming from Warren Buffett and uh, Mary Buffett, which I believe it's the it's it's her his son, her daughter-in-law, or something like that. So it's a very very interesting book. So if you guys are interested, link is in the description down below. All right. So the second stock that's high risk and high reward is BlackBerry. BlackBerry still exists. Yes, they still exist, but they're no longer a phone company. They don't make phones anymore. They don't sell phones anymore. I mean, if you look at the chart, they were at a peak at 2008 at a at 150 bucks. Now they just crashed and they're just in in the five six dollar ranges up until now. What BlackBerry has done that's changed. They have completely reamped and changed their business. Now they are focusing in the cybersecurity business. And as we know, the cybersecurity business is set to grow at a 10% rate year over year, and it's a very, very growing market. Especially when this pandemic hit, everything went online. It literally, this pandemic literally transformed everything to be online, and it really made everything just five to 10 years faster. It made everything more digital a lot faster than it would regularly would have. So here BlackBerry has decided to go ahead and go with the cybersecurity, but there is a very good strong market for it. And so we're gonna look at the risks and the positives of it. Let's start off with the risks. And the risk here is that um, they are focusing in cybersecurity in the automotive business. And that's in my opinion is in this advantage, knowing the fact that this pandemic really damaged all um, automotive businesses except for Tesla, like literally all except for Tesla. The automotive business right now is in a very interesting situation right now where because of Tesla, they're moving to EVs, electric vehicles. And so, I mean, again, this, this pandemic really changed all that for some reason. It was a switch. I don't know if it was really the pandemic or just regular business or just regular routine, but it's just the situation is quite interesting. Don't you agree? Now, the reason why I say the automotive business is a disadvantage for cybersecurity for BlackBerry, at least, is because, well, the situation happened and no one really wants to buy cars. And so um, I can imagine that they're not going to be having a lot of business at this time. And we can see the net earnings and the um, revenues in just a bit. But eventually, when this thing blows over, because it will blow over sooner or later, their business and their industry will come back to where it was or similar to where it was. And BlackBerry can still make some good gains on that automotive industry. So let's go ahead and look at the revenue and earnings. So we're gonna go ahead and look at Q2 2020. And we can see that sales were not as consistent and their net profit or their earnings was just down. I mean, just look at that dip. It just doesn't look like that was bad, like that was bad. You can tell that it was bad, but let's just look, let's just look deeper inside exactly what happened here. So we can see that the net profit dropped due to the impairment of capital assets. Now this could be because of the currency that went down or this could be because of something got damaged in the company or things in that nature. Now I didn't do much research exactly to see what that was, but we can, we can assume that it was probably the currency drop because in Q2 2020, once that oil dropped, Canada lost a lot. I mean, I'm telling you, Canada is dependent on oil because that's one of the natural resources that they have. And so when that tanked, the Canadian dollar tanked as well a little bit. So we can see why that dropped a lot. Another thing that I don't like to see about this revenue and earnings for the quarter and for the entire year is that they're not consistent at all. Like one year is, is a lot, one year they're making profits, the next year they're not, the first quarter they are, the next quarter they're not. I don't like to see that as an investor and I like to see consistency over time. Like for example, when we see Lightspeed, okay, yeah, we can see that their net profit is down, but their revenue continues to keep going up and up and up and up. And so that's very important to me. And so I need to see consistency for me to feel safe to at least make some sales, to make some investments, not sales. So personally, I like to see a lot of consistency when I want to make any investments. Another disadvantage or another risk that I don't like to see here is their um, free cash flow. Um, again, it's not consistent. Like one quarter is a lot, next quarter is a lot more, then it's just negative again. And you know, I just don't like to see inconsistency in a business because it's just, I, I don't see that is a healthy thing in my opinion. I need to see consistency and consistency is very key when you guys wanna make any investments because you can predict what's going to happen next. Like for me personally, I have no idea what BlackBerry is gonna do next quarter. I don't like to see that. I like to see consistency and predict what's going to happen next. At least make an intelligent guess. Right now I can't make any guess what BlackBerry's next quarter is going to look like. I believe, I assume so, this going is going to be good, but I don't know. 
Like for example, Lightspeed, I know that Lightspeed next quarter, they're probably gonna do a lot more sales due to things opening back up and slowly um, restrictions being eased down in other countries and such. I know this will happen and as well as e-commerce that's going to do perform a lot better than we, I think, originally think. But for BlackBerry, I really have no idea what's gonna happen next quarter. So this is why for me, it's a risk. Now, in my opinion, that's all the risks. Let's take a look at some good stuff, some positives. As mentioned earlier, cybersecurity is set to increase year over year. And so if BlackBerry can really get a grip and really get a good fundamental, and a footprint into this uh, industry, they will do good. Due to this pandemic, things are gonna be online, things you never thought are probably going to be online and that requires some sort of cybersecurity. So if BlackBerry can diversify and not just be in the automotive business, if they can do some other things, I think they will have a great shot in securing some shares of this business, taking some market share. But let's go ahead and look at the balance sheet. So if you get the current assets and divide it by the current liabilities, we get over one, which is good, meaning that they can pay off the current liabilities right now if they wanted to. Now, if you do the same thing with the total assets and divide it by the total liabilities, we get 2.46, which is really good because that means they can pay off the total um, liabilities uh, with the total assets almost two and a half times over which is really good to see and it's very healthy This is very healthy and this tells me this person what this tells me is that this company will weather this storm They will come over and they will weather this uh, pandemic um, Because they have a good financial position another great thing that I see about Blackberry is that earnings per share They've all been beaten that when analysts expected to hit a certain earnings per share BlackBerry just beat them all. Now, I don't know if analysts are downballing BlackBerry, but they're beating all of it, which is really good to see, meaning that they are performing better than what they're expecting them to do, So, which is a very good sign. Another risk that I see with BlackBerry is the fact their shareholder equity or the equity of the company is decreasing over time, slowly and slowly. Quarter two was the worst because of what just happened. But I think they can rebound back, but again, they are decreasing, and that's something that I don't like to see. The current price for BlackBerry is $4.80, and this price, in my opinion, is a okay price to get in, but slowly. I wouldn't put all my shares into it. I would buy a little bit, and then if it dips more, I would buy more. But currently, I don't have BlackBerry in my portfolio. I'm just gonna watch it for now. It's just that they're not consistent with their earnings and they're not consistent with their revenue. So I, I'm just gonna stay and watch on this one. But if they do, and I'm saying if they do, pull it off and diversify and really, really get a footprint and get the fundamental strong, get the concrete strong on cybersecurity, I think they're going to boom. I think they're probably going to be one of the uh, uh, fast growing stocks of maybe Maybe not this year, maybe next year or the year after that. Because BlackBerry has an amazing balance sheet, so they do have a chance of becoming one of the fastest growing stocks of one of these years coming. But we just have to wait and see to see exactly what they're going to be doing. So overall for this company, I'm personally just going to sit and watch and see what happens. Um, but if they do get their cybersecurity footprint strong in the industry, automotive industry, and if automotive industry does rebound back sooner than later, we're going to see this company going up but I would like to see them diversify in other places as well, so their, their eggs are not in one basket. So if you guys have money and you wanna gamble a little bit, take a little bit of some risks, these are more calculated risks, obviously, you guys can buy these two high risk, high reward stocks and just see what happens for the next year or two because they are a little bit speculative. So that's why you should not have much money in it. For example, you can invest a thousand bucks in each and then if you lose a thousand bucks, you lose a thousand bucks, whatever, but if you gain 10,000 or 20,000, I mean, the upside is a lot more, but again, you guys should do your own research first before you guys dip your toes into these stocks. And uh, take what I just said with a grain of salt. I mean, learn from it at least, at least get some insight from it. Hopefully this will let you guys go to their companies and look deeper in them, see exactly what they're doing. And that's about it guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, comment below if you guys learned something or if I missed something about these companies that I did not cover. And so um, give this video a like, subscribe for more, and I shall see you guys in the next video. Peace.